This is how you use the color replacement tool to change color in Photoshop. All right, so the color replacement tool can be found in the brush tool menu over here. So find your brush tool, right click and go down to color replacement tool. It'll be this little circle with the plus on the inside. The plus is the sampling spot. And then the circle around is where it's gonna brush, like change the color. To change the size of that, you just go into this little drop down here. And obviously the higher you go, the bigger that you know area or circle is gonna be. And the lower you go, the smaller that circle is gonna be. So for me, I'm gonna go to about 200, something like that for what I'm doing. And hardness is obvious, the higher you go, you can see this little circle, the more harsh like the edges of the circle are, and then the lower you go, the more blurry there are. I'm gonna keep it right down blurry, and I'm gonna leave the rest here. For mode, uh, again, for what we're doing, we're, you can pick color or hue, either one is fine. I'm gonna stay with color. For sampling here, I'm gonna pick this one, which is sampling continuous. So wherever that little plus goes, it's gonna constantly sample whatever color it's over and then change it to whatever this color is right here. To change this color, just click on it and you can slide this around and pick whatever you want. I'm just gonna kinda keep it as like a green like that. If you pick this one though, sample once, also a good one, just not good for maybe one that has kind of like a range of colors like this. It's probably better for one that has a solid color like this. So just a quick example here, for sampling once, Whatever I click on with that little plus, that's the color it's gonna sample and I'm gonna change it to this color, like I just said. So I'm gonna click and it's only going to change that color that I'm on. Okay, so that's a really quick way to change the color of a solid color, right? Something like that. Just be aware that for tolerance, if I had this too high, so I'm just gonna undo that. If I had the tolerance higher, that means it's gonna allow for a greater range from this blue. So if I crank this to 90 and then try the same thing, you're gonna see it kind of bleeds off into that other blue because we've allowed a greater range of blue. So for a solid color like this, I would actually drop my tolerance way down. So it's maybe even to nothing, like to 1%. So it's only gonna select that singular blue Therefore, it's only gonna change that singular blue as I paint over it. Okay, so that's an easy way to change something that's a solid color. Now, if we go back to this one, I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. That's not really gonna work with this one because if I click on this now and try to paint, it's only selecting that 1% of tolerance of that yellow that I picked. So that's not gonna work. Even if I bump the tolerance up to like 20% or so, which I'm gonna use later on this one. On sample once, you're gonna see that it's gonna create kind of a lot of like blotches because it's only selecting kind of one spot of this yellow at a time. So that's not gonna work very well. And if I bump the tolerance more to try and select more range of that yellow on sample once, as we go to the edge, it's really gonna spill over to the hand or other colors on the outside much easier. So that's not good either. So when you have a range of colors like this, I would select a tolerance of maybe around 20, 25, somewhere in there. And I would pick this one right here, the continuous sampling and keep it on limits contiguous. Now, as I click and paint, it's gonna be constantly sampling wherever that plus is and constantly changing. Just be careful to not move the plus outside of the color that you're trying to change. So since I'm trying to change this yellow, I'm trying to stay within the yellow. Now, the only problem is if you run into a situation like this where the edge of this banana is actually similar to the color on the finger. So you can see the finger is changing green as well. So down here, it's not that big of a deal because the difference between the yellow and the hand is large enough that it's not gonna affect it. But you can see we have some spillover green. If you happen to go beyond with the plus, it's now gonna start sampling that, like this skin tone the whole way through. So we can see that this is really an issue with this tool when used this way. It's a destructive method because you're painting this green essentially right on the image. So if there is any mistake like this, there's really nothing you can do besides going Control or Command Z to undo what you've done and try again. But if you try again, you're probably gonna get a similar result. 
So here's what I suggest you do instead. I go to the fourth tool down here, which is the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, right click, quick selection tool right there. You might see magic wand, quick selection tool. And then I'm gonna go select subject. So that usually does a pretty good job of selecting my subject. If there's something missing like this little chunk here, then just use the plus to kind of add it back in like that. If there's something extra like that, then use the minus to get rid of it, to paint it out of the selection. Okay, when you have a decent selection, let's go to select and mask. And in here, we're just gonna bump the radius a bit, smooth it out a bit, add some contrast. And then down here, this is the important part, output two, change selection to new layer with layer mask, and then click okay. That's gonna bump a new layer up here. It's gonna get rid of the background. We don't really care about that. We're gonna use this background after, but we're just gonna hide it like this for now. And then make sure to click not on the mask, click on the actual thumbnail here, and then do the same thing. So go back to the color replacement tool, pick your color. So I'm gonna actually pick this blue this time and do the same thing. Now, you don't have to be as careful now because there's nothing on the outside here. So you can just paint away, paint away, paint away. But the reason why I like to do it this way is because of this thing. So see here, this yellow on the edge of the banana here is very similar to the hand. That's why we had this spillover. We're still gonna get the spillover, that's fine. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before, paint up to there, get that one done right there. Now, if I was doing it for real, I would have taken a little bit more time than that, but I'm trying to fly through this. Okay, so now all we have to do is go over to the mask, click on the mask, and you can see that whatever is black is what's missing. So if we just change our color replacement tool back to the brush and make sure it's a black brush here. So if you don't see black, click on it, make it black and okay. And then up here, we can change the size and hardness again. I'm gonna go like 70 something percent for hardness and size. I'm gonna go, yeah, around 90 to 100 there. And all you're gonna do is if we zoom in, you're just now gonna paint out on the mask because black is essentially an eraser now you're gonna paint out everything that we don't want and yes the hand is gonna disappear here if you don't like seeing that you can also just put the background back on and that'll help so you can just see exactly what your final thing is gonna be so there's a little bit of blue on this finger there I'm gonna paint that one out paint out this zone I'm gonna go in pretty fast again but for you take your time do this properly get it so it looks good. If you still have something like this that you now erase because you just took it out with this, then all you do on the mask is flick this back to white and you can then just paint that back in. So you can go back and forth between black and white and get the uh, look that you want. So this was before and this is after. Yellow banana, blue banana. Now, even though the color replacement tool is a very simple way to change color, there are much better ways to do it in Photoshop, like the video that's linked on the screen right now. Try watching that one instead. It's much better.